When you visit the site of a Roman fort today, often what you see in the ground is this. So how can you go from that to this? It turns out that, with some exceptions, the Roman fort is fairly predictable, and because of that, it's possible to say a lot about what was once there from what's left. A Roman fort is usually shaped like a square or playing card, straight sides with rounded corners. A ditch lay out front, with a clay or turf rampart built up against the inside of the walls. Archaeologists can still often find the individual turves stacked up, sometimes with the grass preserved. There are typically four or six gates, often with guard rooms and towers. Two main roads converge at a fort's center, the Via Praetoria coming from the fort's main gate, and the Via Principalis coming from the sides. At the point where they meet, near the center of the fort, lay the headquarters, the Principia. The Romans hit on its distinctive style, basically a miniature forum, early on, and they kept it for centuries. A courtyard out front, long cross hall for massing and addressing the troops, and along the back a row of offices with the central regimental shrine. You find those things in the ground, you've got a Principia. Other parts of Roman forts are also easily ideable by their footprints. Granaries had to be strong, buttressed on the outside to hold the weight of the regiment's food supplies, with raised floors to keep the air circulating and dry. Find that you found a granary. And the commander always had a home of high honor, his Praetorium. It usually sat next to the Principia, with its own central courtyard surrounded by rooms and offices, some with plumbing or underfloor heating. So that's the central bit of a fort, but what will you find in the rest? That depends on who was garrisoning it. An auxiliary unit could be infantry, cavalry, or a mix of both. They were generally either about 500 strong or about 800 strong. For example, house steads on Hadrian's Wall held an 800 strong garrison of infantry, the first cohort of Tungrians. Nearby Vendelanda held a mixed infantry cavalry unit of about 500, the fourth cohort of Gauls. Infantry barracks are easy to spot. First, they're long, each one designed to hold a century of infantry, about 65 to 80 soldiers. They're split into even-sized apartments, with a larger apartment at one end for the Centurion. Cavalry barracks can be tougher to spot. A cavalry unit, called a Terma, held about 30 to 32 soldiers, who were housed in the same buildings as their own animals, either in a room behind the stables or above them. Many such barracks, like these at Wall's End Fort, can be ID'd by stone-filled pits in the stable rooms, which were soakaways for horse urine. These at Vendelanda are just being excavated now. Two, face to face, are just the right size to hold 32 horses on the ground floor and 32 soldiers living above them. Right, so what's left? Well, forts needed workshops or fabrici. These tend to be long and narrow, like barracks, but without the partition walls inside. Plus, they often have signs of furnaces and smithing. And what happens if you have a Praetorium already and find another courtyard building? Call it a hospital. The Vendelana tablets mention a hospital in the early 2nd century. And this building, dug at Halsteads back in 1898, has various rooms the right size for operating rooms, recovery rooms, and storage areas. The last essential parts of a Roman fort are easy to spot. If you find a small building up against the fort wall with deep drains and culverts, you've got a latrine. Areas of reddened, burned clay in the rampart are bread ovens. Roman forts do come in all shapes and all configurations, but armed with the work of generations of archaeologists and historians, it's usually possible to make sense of those stones in the ground. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching!